That's an interesting piece for your 12th weekly drawing. It's oil on canvas by a Dutch painter named Jacob van Roysdel. My Dutch isn't great, um, so I might have butchered his last name slightly. Um, an example of Dutch Golden Age painting. It's now in the collection of the Kunsthal Zurich, Zurich in Switzerland. This era of Dutch painting, the Golden Age, was a period in history, in, in Dutch history, uh, roughly spanning the 17th century. It was during and after the later part of the Eighty Years' War, which was from 1568 to 1648. The Eighty Years' War was for Dutch independence, so an important war in their history. Uh, this created a new Dutch Republic, which was very prosperous and the most prosperous nation in Europe at that time and led European trade, science, and art. Um, during a period in history in Europe where there's the Reformation happening, um, an intense period of history where the um, the Catholic Church people are breaking from it and creating like Lutheranism and the Dutch Reformed Church. The northern Never Netherlandish provinces that made up the new state had traditionally been less important artistic centers than the cities in the south of Flanders, another part of um, Holland. The upheavals and large-scale transfers of population because of the war and the sharp break with the old monarchist and Catholic cultural traditions, that's part of the Reformation, meant that Dutch art had to reinvent itself. It's a period of time where art is purposely reinventing and creating new things because of change of worldview and belief. Um, the painting of religious subjects declined sharply during this time. There was a new market that opened up for all kinds of secular subjects because of that and the world as it was we could say too not necessarily secular in that there's a sacred secular divide but maybe in the sense that um they were looking for things beyond just paintings of saints and particular parts of the bible and dutch painting in the golden age is included in the general european period of baroque painting and often shows many of its characteristics, but it often lacks the idealization and love of splendor that a lot of other Baroque work would, would have, including that of neighboring Flanders was a little bit more like that. So most work from that period is best known in the traditions of detailed realism, which was inherited in early Netherlandish painting, which we can see in this a distinctive feature is the proliferation of genre painting um, with the majority of art artists producing the bulk of their work with one of the genres and you could see this happening with things like landscape and still life as part of genre painting. The full development of the specialization is seen in the late 1620s and then until the French invasion in 1672 which uh, was another part of their history. That was the core of golden age painting was these genre paintings. They would spend a lot of their career painting only portraits or genre scenes like landscapes, seascapes and ships or still lifes. And often uh, they would even specialize in a particular subcategory. Many of these types of subjects were new in Western painting and the way the Dutch painted them in this period was decisive for future developments of painting in Europe in the world Western art history. This painting was documented um, by Holsted de Groot in 1911 who wrote a catalog of the most prominent Dutch painters of the 17th century and inc included this painting in there. The Harlem bleaching grounds, this is a quote, in the left foreground is a marshy pool surrounded with trees over here. Um, a road leads up leads from up a hill towards the right background. In the middle distance is part of the bleaching grounds. Large pieces of linen are spread out near cottages and many persons are at work. In the distance is the town of Harlem, donated, dominated by the church of St. Bavo. The sky is filled with great masses of clouds which overshadow almost the whole landscape. Stray sunbeams illum illuminate part of the town and the bleaching grounds. 
signed in full in the left hand bottom corner. Um, canvas is the canvas is twenty five and a half inches by twenty two inches. Um, it was exhibited originally at Dusseldorf in eighteen eighty six and sold to some counts. It's very similar to other panorama paintings that he that the artist made in this period. He did a number of them with bleaching grounds. So here's the bleaching ground. So this is where they're making cloth. Um, and this was an idea. These paintings served as inspiration for later painters of the landscape, such as Jacob Maris of the Hog School. So they were very influ influential. I think you can see here, this is the bleaching grounds of the cottages. So it shows a sort of type of work that the people were doing. And we could see in Reformed traditions, um, the thought there's a what we would call a work ethic that's often shown, like a Protestant work ethic. So that's kind of being implicated here in a good way. And then you see the horizon line with the church that dominates. Very flat, lowland country with all the dikes and things that keep it from being flooded. So we don't have the mountainous landscape, but what we have is this capturing of these great, beautiful cloud formations on the trees. And then the way the sun is striking in various spots through the clouds makes a real beauty to this piece. Interesting subtle color palette. The greens are very darkened because of the shadow. And the yellows pop out. Orange is yellow. There's a use of a reddish orange throughout, which contrasts a lot with the sky. And these beautiful bright blues peeking through in spots that aren't cover with cloud but there's a grayish blue used throughout the clouds that's very beautiful really really small details of people in here it's really amazing and the white it's like geometric white because of the bleached cloth reflects back to the sky in a really interesting way I would like you to draw this one in the slideshow I put them both or the PDF that you draw use the black and white one to draw this you can see the windmills further off in the distance. There's really a desire to capture the world as it is. There is, of course, some kind of feeling of romanticism in the piece. A romantic view of landscape and work and labor and the place he's from. Um, you can see in the black and white version how he even captured minis miniature little birds. You can't see it as well here, but they're there. It gives you a good sense of how color is related to value and how color has value by looking at this work. And I think that's an interesting. And just look at the kind of detail in the roof and the windows and things. Really beautiful, beautiful work to learn from. And I think he leads the eye very well in this piece through value shifts and color changes. And this is the eye level he's overlooking his eye levels at the horizon so there's a lot of grandeur and I would say based on the Reformation time there's sort of an idea of the world reflecting um, the glory of God rather than like you said previous monarchical monarchical and Catholic subjects the change is happening and that's reflected in the way that they're painting and what they're painting so really interesting work for you to study and the use of depth of space is really well done. There's a foreground, middle ground, and deep space. It's broken up by these landscape, these um, cityscape features on the landscape. Almost you look at two thirds of the painting is this beautiful sky that dominates, and then these birds kind of move your eye throughout with the cloud formations. And then this third is compressed sort of space, like looking over deep space with the landscape and the horizon line. So it's like a cloudscape too, as much as a landscape was part of the landscape, but you could almost think of it like a cloudscape, which is not a real terminology necessarily, but I find it that part of it really interesting. So even though he's capturing the natural world and doing it in a somewhat romantic way, there's more to this than just 
look and put down, see what he had, and just put it down, and that's it. The idea of capturing the natural world and the genres and the development of them was a break from earlier traditions of capturing mythology and the Bible and things like that, and a portraiture of emperors and things like that in art history. And so this is a, now it's kind of pretty banal idea to capture a landscape as a revolutionary thing. I mean, it's banal in that way. I don't think landscape painting is banal. If you follow, there's interesting people who make books like landscape painting now. Um, there's really interesting uses of landscape painting that are happening even now that have impl implications for a lot of social, social cultural ideas. Well, it's the same here, and it goes all the way back to this point. And this point, it was a lot more of a break with a long tradition and a little more revolutionary to do these type of genre paintings. And doing that sort of set art in different directions than it had been going before. And so it's an important part of art history, the Dutch Golden Age, um, a painting in a particular part of history and time that these were made reflects the sort of shifts in worldviews that were happening. And so you can see that in art being a, sometimes being a reflection of the worldview people have, but other times also being, in quotes, a sort of prophetic vision of what may happen or could happen. And that's one of the uses of art. Um, when we study it, we look at where people were coming from and then where they thought they should be going. Mm, and that's an interesting part of looking and talking and thinking about art. And it's still even its use now as a way to talk about who we are, where we are, where we may be going as people and all those implications. So I find this work to reflect that sort of idea and to be um, a really well executed, well designed piece that's bringing in a lot more to it, maybe in the sense of historically where it was coming from. And this specifically in its subject matter of bleaching fields and landscape is bringing in some of those type of things in that day and age as well. So uh, have a good look at it, block things out, think about the value and the darks and lights, very good use of this values in this one. All right, if you have questions as ever, you can contact me in a many ways, um, Canvas inbox, email, question answer cafe, in progress postings. There's a lot of ways for you to hit me up. So if you need help, please don't suffer in silence. I'm here for you. All right, take care.